Hey Brick Maniacs, it is Lando here, and today we have Cody with us, and he has his all new Jumbo Sherman, and it's the first in Bastone edition. Yeah. Yeah. So, where do you want to start? I don't know. You don't know? I never know. First in Bastone. I always go by the what first. you want to know. Uh, that's what he says. That's what he okay. painted on his vehicle. He's just the first in Bastone. First guy to get back to the <laughs> photographer. Yeah. Oh, I was there. It was me. Yep. So this is um, arguably one of the most iconic images of a Sherman tank it's in World War II. It certainly is. And that's what everyone thinks the Sherman tank looked like. That, yeah. that, that was a famous photo. Everyone thinks that's the Sherman. Mm -hmm. Not really. They only made a few hundred of these. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was a stopgap tank between having the, uh, the M4 and the Pershing. Okay. Pershing. Pershing was a heavy tank that they were hoping to have developed by late 1944 and introduce it into the theater. But there were some delays in that, so they figured, well, we need this vehicle to push through um, the Battle of the Bulge, right. um, regain some ground. So they developed this rather quickly, and it's just a Sherman on roids. It's, yeah. It's, it's got a lot thicker armor. It has a different turret. As a, uh, it's a T-23 turret. Um, still carries the same 75 millimeter gun, although some did have a 76 millimeter gun. And those versions, I believe, were mocked up in the field. Um, I believe Patton made requests to get these for himself, but they didn't show up in time, so he had um, his engineers work up jumbo-like Wow. versions so they were just up armored Shermans that were inoperable at the time and he got a, a hundred of those or so so there are some different variants and and this may the first in Bastogne may actually be one of those variants that was modified okay. in the field it may not actually be a factory version so there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty on that yeah and I just discovered that just before we started filming I was like this may actually be a non-factory version interesting, interesting. Um, but the, you know uh, you're not gonna tell in Lego it's gonna look <laughs> right <laughs> pretty similar um, yeah, it's it's well, it's about the same armament as the M4 Sherman had, uh, but there's stronger armor. And yeah, could check out that mantlet right there. Yeah, it's it's thick. There's uh, about seven in inches of armor between very. you know surrounding the gun and into the turret, so it's very impenetrable. Sure. And there were some cases where, at least one instance I was reading about that, one of the jumbos took uh, four hits from an 88 at 800 yards. Okay. And the fifth one was the one to destroy it because it went through the gunner sight. Oh, that's cheating. I know, it's cheating, right? <laughs> I was like, I was really proud because you think about the Sherman not being that tough, but the Jumbo was certainly a tough tank. And that's like a lucky shot right there. So. Yeah, that's, a, that's one in a million. So, um, yeah, very tough. Could, ri could rival a, a Tiger's armor. Wow. Um, and they had enough success with the 75 millimeter gun, so they kept it in there. And they had the vertical volute suspension, which is very iconic, and that's still what's built here. Um, you have the EZ-8 that had the horizontal volute suspension, and they did have troubles with the vertical volute suspension with the heavier version okay. of the, the Sherman tank. And so they're telling crews, like, just drive carefully. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy going cross-country. <laughs> Not that you could go much, you couldn't go that fast anyways. Don't go off any jumps. Because it's, it's heavier than the standard Sherman sure. tank. So it had to go slower anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the story of that, and then of course that's how the iconic photo came about. I'm assuming if you can uh, take a direct hit with the from an 88, the crews probably were pretty happy with that. Right. So yeah, how was this yeah. received by the the crews? I, I think it was well received by the crews. Yeah, certainly was. Compared um, to maybe uh, the uh, the notoriety of previous Shermans. But. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're certainly safer in a jumbo. Yeah. Um, it's a bit roomier too. That's, that's a pretty big turret. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, so this is uh, going on to the kit um, and some of the details. Um, you, you have a, some redesigns. Uh, I guess the first off the bat, I noticed this back end here. Uh, yeah, I, I do. So I actually came up with this design using this wedge plate to illustrate that slope. Uh, I think I was like in eighth grade. I was like, <laughs> I was 13, 14 years old. Eighth grade, Cody. When I, when I was probably 14, when I came up with that design, um, springboarding off of. Dan Sherman, uh, I think he was using different slopes. It was like a four by two slopes stacked on top yeah. of each other. And I modified my version. I kept the same front end and then I added that slope plate. Of course, I had like four of them stacked together just to bump it out, make it two bricks wide. Okay. Um, so you'd see all the, the notches um, where the studs would go. So it like kind of unsightly really sure. <laughs> in my version but I was able to actually incorporate it this time I did have an easy 8 that I built um, 
when I first started working at Brick Mania, right. just for myself. It actually got me my job here. Right. <laughs> I showed it to Dan in the, in the digital designer. I just had the upper hold on. Um, but so finally I was able to incorporate that. Very cool. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of a cool backstory. It's like that, that's springing off your very first model that you made for Brick Mania, even though that wasn't the first one of yours that we released. I think the Cor wasn't the Corsair the first one we released? Uh, it was the Jeep. Actually. The Jeep, sorry, yeah. Corsair was third? Uh, second. Gosh, where? I what? This is, yeah. was the I, I, I came up with the Corsair, oh. and then I had a Jeep, and Dan was like, make that okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. There we go. <laughs> but it is cool to see some, uh, you know, original, you know, Cody pre-Brick Mania stuff coming through the yeah. pipeline here. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, and there's a, a different sloping to the front of the tank, the angled armor, uh, the Sherman that we have currently in production that's been in production for like a year and a half mm -hmm. now, um, has a, a steeper slope to it, or sure. shallower, I guess it depends on how you're looking at <laughs> the angle of that slope, but this is the 47 degree slope armor, and then the hatches for the driver and the assistant driver aren't bumped out, they don't protrude from the front armor. Right. Um, now they're more flush with it, it's called the large hatch hull version. Um, they too had that first incorporated, then there's the A3. Um, and a different design, this is pretty much coming straight out of the Israeli uh, Sherman, that the Super Sherman that Dan came up with okay, yeah. uh, a few weeks ago. So I, I incorporated that, um, the gearbox in the front. And I reduced the size of the tire suit of the wheels because I did have plates, um, round plates that were dark bluish gray. Okay. Uh, I went with a rubber tire this time. I think it, it fits better. I was able to change the design of uh, the vertical volute suspension, how okay. it looks, as opposed to the, the production model we have currently running. It is so, nice seeing this two wide track on here. That, that really yeah, adds yes, to the exactly. Beefiness. So that, that's uh, to illustrate the Grouser, um, the duck build mm -hmm. extension on Sherman tanks. Um, so they bolt on this extra little piece to give it a bit more surface area, yeah, essentially. Yeah, it, it's kind of part of the, the exterior tooth that would grab the right. gear, and then it's bolted onto that. And that gives you um, better traction yeah. and supports the vehicle a little bit better. It's, it's a larger surface area that a heavier vehicle like this would need to right. have without sinking in the ground. So, right. that's, so that's kind of what illustrates that. I did have one and a half wides previously, but the double wides, I think, add that nice effect as per the photograph, that's what they had. Um, is a wider track. Yeah. Looking like a wider track, but it's really just that extension. Um, we have printed elements. Yeah, there's a lot of cool little printed stuff in here. So we have the classic uh, 50 cal linked. That was like one of the first printed elements we probably had. Early. And we printed in house. Yeah. Something like that. It's, it's up there. <laughs> um, Sorry. So that's a that. nice throwback to that one. And then we do have two of these new. Yeah, these are awesome. I'm really excited for these things. Crates. Um, yeah, there's a lot of subtle wood grain. Um, I mean, brand new pine boxes uh, in World War II, are, they're, they're pretty like light or um, it's got that wood grain yeah. to it. So. Yeah, um, with some detailing on there. It's a cool, cool message in there. <laughs> a secret hidden message. Secret message. It's not hidden anymore. No, you can read it. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what it says. It's Brick something Mania, Brick Mania. 1999. Cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. But it's cool, and we're hoping to keep that going, maybe? Yeah, we'll Probably. see. I'll try to use that whenever we can, so throw it on your tanks. Yeah, I incorporated a built-in shelf mm -hmm. on the front so you can have the crate there. Yeah. Uh, there's the Brick Arms 30 caliber short ball mount gun there, as opposed to the Sherman that we're currently having in stock, which is like a mashup of a, a few different elements to create that. Sure. Um, uh, Brick Arms M2HB on top. Yes. Opening closing hatch for the commander on top opening and closing hatches for um, the driver and the driver assistant, although you can't really fit a figure in those hatches, but you can take their heads off, maybe have them sticking out of the hatches. Yeah, for posing, it, for uh, modeling, it's kind of cool for your dioramas and stuff. Back end looks pretty cool. Some nice grill detail back there. Yeah. And tools mounted on the side. Mm -hmm. And printed elements are those, and as well as we have a gunner sight 
and a coaxial okay, yeah, those, caliber machine yeah, gun. Those are printed as well, so that's kind of simulating those, uh, I guess, the holes where the, the uh, sight yeah. and the gun would go. <laughs> and there's nothing fancy about that. It's like it's just a hole. Yeah. <laughs> you can't add a lot of detail. But which, so which one was the, where uh, the 88 got the, sh the round through? It was probably right here. Okay. So it's about a lucky size. shot. <laughs> lucky shot. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there is a sticker pack that comes with this as well. Correct. So the first in Baston, really iconic. Um, you know, hand painted. I think they actually spelled it wrong when they were like. There's like, <laughs> there's like a mistake in that. there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in the actual pictures. Like right. B A S T. Uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> Bastoni. Bastoni. Dang it! There's a G in there. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's, it's I, don't know, I love kind of little details like that, where it's like, hey, there's yeah. just people out in the field. Or whatever. Well, and it's such a huge change uh, <laughs> for sticker art than we're used to. Yeah, yeah. Usually it's pretty cut and dry. It's just, bam, that's what it is. Yeah. Nice and clean and simple. And this is kind of So I had to do some hand tracing artistic. on that. Yeah. Um, then we have the just different manufacturing information. This was, they actually just like hand painted that right over the, the factory <laughs> insignia, uh, serial numbers and stuff. So um, that's all in there. You got the Cobra King. Yep, written on there. Cobra King. What's that in reference to? That's a. Uh, That's just uh, the tank name. Just the name of the tank. The name of the tank wasn't first in Bastogne. Sure. It's just what they painted on the side of it. But a lot of people would have nicknames for their um, their own tanks. So the, this tank is called so Cobra King. Cobra yeah. King. Yeah. Not the first in Bastogne tank. No. <laughs> um, printed star, or, um, sticker star, uh, and these are kind of cool. These are on transparent stickers uh, paper. Um, it's a transparent sticker sheet, and yeah. uh, so it looks really nice. Um, it's not this like super stark white. It's actually kind of a, a semi. You can, a little bit of light goes through, so it kind of it looks like it's more hand painted on. Actually, yeah, it's cool. Looking. We're really liking how these ones are turning out. Um, and then we also have your color shifting on the, the oh, drive yeah. wheel on the front. Yeah, it's a it's a, a sprocket. It's a subtle detail. Um, this this sprocket here. I try to make it. I try to make it look like the uh, actual uh, Sherman drive sprocket, which is a really Weird looking gear up front, actually. There's it's got a couple these, different variants of it. Yeah, it, it's interesting to look at. This is the more streamlined one. It's just a big. It's just solid. Yeah, it's a solid one, not the one where there's, there's an intricate like cutout. Oh my cutout goodness, that's an intricate. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this has um, a little bit of color tinting to darken up the interior. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, last but not least, the figure. Go over that fig. Cool. Um, updated tanker jacket, uh, a little bit of simulated fabric. And then, um, so that's that winter tanker jacket that was really sought after by everybody in the field. And you'd see that with infantry as well. Um, and whoever can get their hands on it. A uh, little bit of grease stains going on on the arms. Um, and then the legs, some more updated artwork. Yeah, that side, the side holster with that uh, slouching pistol belt. Yeah, that's cool. And a little med or medic pack on the front. Uh, the face, I was trying out something new here. Um, showing off. I've seen this, Lego's done this in the past, but it just was like one giant solid color. Um, yeah. It's like some like little. Kind of looks like a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a five o'clock. But um, so this is trying to simulate like this guy had his goggles down and lots of exhaust or smoke or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'd see them like, you know, take their goggles off and obviously have the dirty face below it. So dirty it's face. It's kind of like, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> It's a little bit of a fading going on there. Um, we extended the printing all the way out to the, the sides and kind of let the printers overspray a little bit so you get that kind of dusting texture going on there. Um, turned out really sweet, so yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, Very um, cool. that's the Jumbo Sherman. I think so. Yeah. Um, so they they are sold out online. Yeah, sold out online, <laughs> but our stores should all have copies of them. So if you have not been to our uh, store locations, um, our Capital Store. Uh, Chicagoland store and Minneapolis. Uh, they all should have a copy or two available. Uh, so get in while you can. With that, that's the Jumbo Sherman designed by Cody O'Sell. And for more information, please check out brickmania.com. Thanks for watching.